beautiful day in Shanghai to stay at home. I lived in different cities throughout my stay in China and Shanghai is not my favorite, but it is definitely the easiest one to get used to when you are a foreigner. It has its own unique culture, but it's very international and multicultural at the same time. If you're coming to China for the first time and you're trying to start a business or develop your career or just have fun, Shanghai might be the best place for you. So the first thing you need to know is that you will never be alone. There is almost 27 million people in Shanghai. And despite the great exodus of 2022, still well over a hundred thousand foreigners. You'll be seeing them on the subway, in your workplace, at your university. It's really so hard to feel alone in this city. If face-to-face -face is hard for you like it is for me, just try joining a WeChat group for your district or for Shanghai. Going out is a good way to make myself feel better and there's always something happening in Shanghai, so you will find something for yourself to do. I'm on my way to the gym, it's a beautiful day. I am nowhere near where I usually go, but that doesn't matter because my gym is a chain and I can go wherever I want. They have their gyms in all the biggest cities around the country and also the pools and they have classes. You can do yoga, you can do the aerial hoop stuff. This is not an ad for my gym. I'm just trying to say uh, Shanghai is a very sporty city and you can do pretty much whatever you like. Pole dancing if you're into that. We have cycling routes, hiking trails, team sports. You can do flag football or rugby. Whatever you're into, they probably have it. Another great thing is that your problems are shared by a lot of other foreigners in the city. Whatever you think is unsolvable, somebody else already solved before you. Because Shanghai sees the rotation of foreigners every month, moving in, moving out, solving visa issues and legal issues and work issues and education issues and all kinds of issues. There's a ton of companies specializing in providing help for foreigners. And some of them like any helper, for example, have their headquarters in Shanghai. Shanghai is a place where a lot of people come to work and study and speaking English nowadays is like a top skill. So you will not have a problem communicating in English here most of the time. A lot of services have been adjusted to accommodate foreigners as well. For example, when you go to a hospital, some hospitals provide a translator for you if you cannot communicate with your doctor. I also didn't have a problem finding a therapist who speaks English. The city is well aware of the foreigners living here, so uh, you will hear English on the metro, uh, there will be transliterations of street names on the signs and so on. The menus at the restaurants have English translation and sometimes it's a total chinglish, but most importantly they have pictures. You really don't need Chinese to live in Shanghai, but since you're already here, it would be a terrible shame not to at least try to learn it. It is midnight and I'm going to stay a bit longer because I'm on a roll studying. So I'm going to order myself a nice meal. I'm going to fire up my Meituan and see what I can get. Shaxian Xiaochi is always one of the first ones. This is the kind of cheap Chinese food that you crave when you come back from a club at 3 a.m. in the morning. Quite a nice selection still at this hour. Then I think I might get a chocolate cake. Just because I can. 
The thing I miss the most about home is probably the food. Is that a horrible thing to say? I do miss my mom. Hi, mom. Anyway, you probably won't have any problems finding food from your country here. And most importantly, it will not only satisfy your cravings, but your dietary needs as well. Just around me right now, there's like New York style pizza, halal places, some vegan places, oh, there is a good Thai restaurant, there is a bunch of Japanese places, and of course, local Shanghainese cuisine. Greek restaurants, Indian restaurants, which are my favorite. There is a lot to choose from. And while we are on that subject, bear in mind that Shanghai is a very multicultural, diverse city, and you will be meeting people from all over the world, so get ready for that, okay? It is about lunchtime, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire up this mini program that I have on WeChat that will show me uh, places that have vegetarian options around me. And I can see that I have a vegetarian place just around the corner. And right next to it, there is a vegan place, which sounds great and cheap. So this is where I'm going to go. Now, when it comes to education, there are a lot of international schools wherever you look in Shanghai, which means two things. One, your kids don't have to speak Chinese to go to school here. And two, there's always a need for English speaking teachers. So if you are one of those, that's great. You can probably score a pretty nice pay with a housing allowance and some cool benefits. Now, when it comes to higher education, universities in Shanghai definitely offer English speaking courses as well as scholarships for foreigners. You can also go for a course in Chinese. This is not a problem. Foreigners are admitted to those every year with the right HSK level. Now, the Ivy League of China is called C9 and those are the universities that constantly rank among the top universities in the world and two of them are located in Shanghai and I should know because I graduated from one of them let me know if you want to hear more about that I am now at the airport. Shanghai has two airports and quite a bunch of train stations, which makes it a perfect place to leave. I originally also picked Shanghai to be able to travel more comfortably and possibly go to Hangzhou on the weekend because Hangzhou is like the best place on earth. And now we also have a subway line to Suzhou, so it's quite great. And in case you need to transfer in Shanghai and you need to change airports, then you can just take line two of the subway and go directly between Hongqiao and Pudong Airport. I was ready to say that Shanghai Hongqiao Airport Arrivals Terminal is the last place in Shanghai not to have a Starbucks, but there we go. You will not have a problem finding imported stuff here. And it's pretty cheap too, especially in the city center. Unless you're looking for like French wine, but that's expensive everywhere, I guess. There are more expensive import markets, but you totally don't have to go to any of those. If you go to smaller import markets that are not chains, you will find like almond milk for 10 quai and nut butters, Betty Crocker, candy, weird Japanese snacks. Yeah, they have it all. Shanghai is a really good place to discover yourself, your hidden passions and inspirations and whatnot. Just last year, I was able to attend a course in interactive storytelling in Twine and it was really fun and I did that while working full-time. So I would recommend you follow some local accounts like That's Shanghai, Smart Shanghai, Time Out Shanghai. The more people you meet, the more WeChat groups you will join and people are promoting their activities in those groups all the time. 
This is how I joined my D&D campaign, for example. There's so much happening in the city that I don't know about. Like every now and then my coworker or a friend will come up to me and tell me about like this awesome drag show that they went to or painted sip class or like whatever concert and I'll just be like, oh man, like how did I not know about this? I'm getting ready to go to a pub quiz about Avatar The Last Airbender, not the blue guys, but the guy with the blue arrow down the forehead. I am going as an earthbender as you can probably tell. So yeah, this is the kind of oddly specific pub quizzes that we have here, which just goes to show that whatever kink you have, you can find people with the same king around here. And as for the pub quizzes, it is in my top five ways of meeting new people that probably share the same interests. I bought these lenses off of Taobao and they are not the best quality. They do look kind of... My point is there is a lot of things happening at any given time. And once you tap into the local scene, you will find a way to satisfy your kink, whatever it is.